big music fan. And so he always has a lot of musicians on the podcast. And it's, it's pretty interesting learning about the history. Because, yeah, Dave Grohl was, is like, you know, Nirvana, Foo Fighters. Major. I mean, he's done so much. It's, it's pretty Major. wild. Yeah, it's pretty the, wild. The, back, the backbone of, like, late 90s, early 2000s, you know, sort of grunge, rock, pop, like, it's the backbone of it. You know, I'm, 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 not a, uh, I'm not a smart man, as we all know. Uh, but I'm smart enough to know that Dave Rose the bomb. I know that. Uh, he's, and he's got a generous beard and head of hair. Uh, <laughs> that's also respectful. Um, so this is the online trainer show, trainer show, trainer show. This is the online trainer show. We shouldn't have a podcast. Because Conan O'Brien plays guitar, he's like a big music fan, and so he always has a lot of musicians on the podcast, and it's, it's pretty interesting learning about the history, because, yeah, Dave Grohl was, is like, you know, Nirvana, Foo Fighters, Major. I mean, he's done so much, it's, it's pretty Major. wild, yeah, it's pretty the, wild. The, back, the backbone of, like, late 90s, early 2000s, you know, sort of grunge, rock, pop, like, just the backbone of it, you know, I'm, I'm... I'm not a uh, I'm not a smart man, as we all know. Uh, but I'm smart enough to know that Dave Rose the bomb. I know that. Uh, he's, and he's got a generous beard and head of hair. Uh, <laughs> that's also respectful. Um, so big news, guys. I know you're. You know you, you knew that I was going to bring the news today, as as I always do. What always I came bring here for. Big, yeah, big shocking. It's 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 literally why we're all here because of the large news. So I'm getting my wisdom teeth removed today. Uh, oh, that's going to be deal. miserable. Yeah. Yeah, it's a big it's a big deal. It's a big oh. deal. And uh and what I've been told by the dentist, that, mind you, this is the state I mentioned this state of the art facility uh in several episodes back. I think it was around my birthday. I had gone to the dentist that day. Jonathan remarked about the uh shockingly comfortable chair that they put you into uh and of course the t- television that hangs from the ceiling above you uh that reruns, you know, something. Um but in any case, so uh, the dentist was going to take my wisdom teeth that day. And I was like, well, no, you know, I, I, I'm going to eat today. It's, you know, my birthday is going to be the next day. Um, he didn't seem to care very much about that. Uh, but I, I pled my case and, uh, and he, we, we decided to wait. I said, besides, I don't have a ride. You know, I don't have anybody take me home. He's like, oh, you, you don't need a ride. And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, yeah, you don't, you don't, you don't even, you'll be able to drive yourself home. Like what? What manner of witchcraft is this, sir? Uh, you got to knock me out to take my teeth. I know like, we we got an oral thing. We got some kind of rinse. And I'm thinking, I don't want to see this. Like I don't I don't want to be present uh, as you pull you know bone from my mouth. Like I, I don't know how this works. So needless to say, I'm a, I'm a bit I'm a wee apprehensive about what's about yeah. to transpire. I don't know how they're gonna time. do that. Now, I'm, granted, I'm, I mean, I got mine. I got mine taken when I was like twelve, but that was a few years ago. But I was certainly knocked out. Certainly I remember out. being pretty out for like a couple, like a good couple days. Like you said, it, you're getting your wisdom teeth out today. Like I don't think you're gonna be here on. I think on Thursday for the podcast, you're gonna be eating ice cream in one hand, <laughs> <laughs> and you're gonna I'm, be. Oh, 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 oh. I might be here to mine. I'm going to mine. Carol, can you You ship me some of Jeff's cards so that I can interact (laughs) on Thursday? Because I want to, I want to, by by the way, the, (laughs) by the way, the Hugh Jeffman Wolverine uh, (laughs) commentary on the mayor's page is so enjoyable. Like, I don't know that I've enjoyed something so much as the side by side of the mayor of Barrie, Ontario. Which, as Jonathan often references, is a small town outside of a larger town. Uh, but Jonathan, have you seen this posting about the comparison between? Yeah, it, it just With it set my soul aflame uh, to see that. Uh, just, just, all, and and then the comment of Hugh Jeffman. Uh, just yeah, that was Dean Somerset. Cheers to Dean Somerset for that because that was brilliant. Well done. He's Hugh well Jeffman. Well done, Dean. Yeah, you 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 won the internet for for. The, the second quarter of 2021. And I'm, I don't even I'm gonna know be honest. Coming. I'm going to be honest. I, I stared at that post for a good few minutes trying to think of something funny to say. And I couldn't <laughs> think about it. So I just moved on. But then, but then, but then, but then, 
But then what happened is Carolina posted something about a plant. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lessons I learned from plants. Yes. And I called my plant a she. And, and then you called Jonathan. your plant a she, yes. which I thought was insensitive. Because how do you know that the plant's a woman? You're Very using she, but you don't know how the plant chooses to identify. Absolutely. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So now I have blocked Jonathan from Facebook. I will not. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I actually was really disappointed. And that's way overdue, by the way. <laughs> like, can we, can we just talk about how overdue you are on that? Uh, finally, I don't think that surprised anyone. I would have blocked him a long time ago. Oh, my gosh. I was Man. disappointed because I thought that that was one of my better responses to one of your posts. And it did not. The The internet did not seem to agree. Yeah. Yeah, I was a little bit upset about that. We didn't, we didn't get, even though, even though you're right, you know, I was shocked at the internalized misogyny of Kero after reading one really book was. about it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, after reading one book ever uh, about, about women's uh, challenges and, and, and their, their societal yeah. uh, norms. I mean, I'm I read a using. I read a headline to a Facebook post one time right. and I am also shocked. Well, that right. totally qualifies you for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Jonathan Goodman and I are single-handedly bringing down the patriarchy one comment at a time. One mm -hmm. ill-advised, slightly informed comment at a time. Uh, <laughs> we, we are progressing women's rights uh, in a fundamental way. Um, so you're, you're welcome, ladies. Uh, just say that. Um, back to my wisdom tea, because that's the real point of the discussion yeah. right here. Like, yeah, I don't, don't want to get away... Dude. I don't want to get away from this. So I, I remember an ex-girlfriend having her wisdom teeth removed. And I think this was, I feel like this was in the 2000s. Uh, mm -hmm. And I was giving her, I'm, as you guys might assume, I'm a, I'm a very skilled caregiver. Like, I make, I make jello like nobody's business. And <laughs> I'm <making> faces. I'm <laughs> amazing. I'm, I'm, ama I'm amazing at jello. You want somebody to change the channel? I'm your guy. Like, nobody Ever changes... Yeah. Ever is being bright, uh, bright, bright red now. Bright red. She's yeah. being red. I'm also I'm thinking right. the same things as Amber, yeah. and I'm wondering yeah. what you mean by jello. Yeah, I didn't. <laughs> Amber, I didn't say I was an expert like your boyfriend, uh, who who has special skills. I think you referred to them uh, earlier in the podcast. Yeah. That's, a, just, that's a different update. Yeah, it's a different update. I'm I'm just saying that I'm an excellent. You know, I change channels. I get blankets. You know, I prop pillows. Very good at this. Perfect. But I recall her being loopy in, mm. on the car ride home. Like, she was out of it for, for a minute. Uh, so, was again. Loopy fiasco? Loopy yeah. fiasco. She, huh? she, was, she got kicked into the car, and I pushed it along the road. Uh, and then we coasted. Uh, so, w what I'm trying to say is, I have, cons I have some concerns. I have some concerns. So, uh, throughout the podcast, if you guys could just reassure me that everything's going to be okay. You know, so, do you have a reassurance card, Keto? You know, I you, have. You, Okay, I have the best story though. There's a video that you can look up and you should actually look it up before you go in your appointment, Ren, because there's this family and they they had like the oh, daughter no. was, yeah, the daughter was going for a wisdom teeth removal and then coming out of the surgery, exactly like super loopy. So they oh, set it all up like it was the zombie apocalypse and they're like, oh, come God. on, we can Wonderful. only do one pet. And she's like, nah. And so she, there, she has to choose between her dogs, and then they're like running and trying. To, oh my! Oh, no. What's a disaster? And it's hilarious. Oh, no. And I hope somebody does that to you because no, I, I I'm here for that. I am this here is, for that. You know, this is the complete opposite of what I just <laughs> asked you to do. Not more than a damn minute ago, you've already gone in the complete opposite direction. You're out of the game, Keto. Like, can we? Can we? Can we cut her mic and her video for a second? Because you're you're out. You know, I've had it. I had about enough for you so far, kiddo. So if you have like a pobrecito card that you can hold up, you know, for sympathy, I'm all for that. Uh, you know, so Jonathan's not going to be helpful today. Uh, so I don't know what's going to happen Thursday. This is my topic I, today. I feel like it, this it is, is your topic. I feel like when we actually get into the into the topic, it's going to be, I'm going to be yeah, very helpful. The topic. I feel like the whole thing should be about my wisdom teeth today, but I mean, <laughs> I got outvoted. So I don't, I don't understand how you're going to be able to drive home after getting your wisdom teeth out. I mean, that's what I don't, that's what I don't get. It sounds painful and, and, uh, and not like a real possibility. Um, so, I mean, we'll just, and, and granted that this is the, like the Tony Stark of dentistry. I mean, there are things in there that are phenomenal in that office, but I don't know. Maybe technology caught up, medical dental technology caught up, and now you, they've got some kind of laser nanotechnology robot that goes in and 
uh, forms Voltron you're just, and you're saying so many words together. Just that's... words. It's just words <laughs> together. Like uh, like nanotechnology, super intelligence, yeah. computer, Bitcoin robot. That just just put reaching together for three, and... <laughs> three syllable words here. I find that three syllable words uh, confuse people. Um, so, but the but the Hugh Jeffman thing highlight of my week so far on social media. Um, Amber's been doing things that's exciting. We have we have textbooks now that are available for the for the version for yeah for the version four yes of the of the online trainer academy the academy as uh, as we call it so that's very exciting. Amber worked diligently on it. Uh, there's a picture of her in the book. So all the people she that did. normally ask her for nudes just buy a book for seventy five dollars and you can bring Amber into your home in in a non creepy way for once. I, uh, I mean, my I, name's I, my I, name's on the front of the book and my author bio's in the back, but Amber did considerably more work than I did on version 4 of that book. By I, more he means all I of it. I will admit that. Uh so Oh yeah. 100%. Yes, yes, Keto. Keto has a point. I just remembered something that I immediately must share with you guys. I had oh. a dream about us all and uh, in this go. dream, yeah, yeah, Ooh. in this dream I was going to it's a getting to hot a in here. Yeah. <laughs> Go on. Wait, Tell wait, wait. <laughs> oh, wait. I'm you listening. just wait. So I'm going to a course. I'm going to a class. And who is my classmate who sits next to me? But James Clear. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and I'm like, I need to take a selfie to show Jonathan. Like that was my first thought. Uh-huh. And, 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 like, and then the and teacher. Like, and then the no. teacher walked and into the so class. I was so excited because I was like, Ren and Amber are gonna love this. <laughs> like you were, you all this took part awesome. in my dream, guys. <laughs> And then, and then the teacher, and then the teacher of the class walked in, and who do you think was the teacher? This guy. <laughs> no, what? you were not. What? It was That's my dream happened. was all about annoying uh, you because I was in the presence of James Clear. So there. I love uh-huh. the fact that I love the fact that James Clear has built something so integral to our lives that it seeps into our subconscious <laughs> yep. and shows up in our dreams. Pretty I've never, much. I've, I've never dreamt about Jonathan Goodman at all, uh, or or the end of, I hear he's got book. You got books or something, John? I don't know. Uh, people ask me what you do. I was like, he's a co-host on a podcast for God's sakes. That's what. I, what about the PTDC thing? Yeah, Ember runs that. What are you What are you talking about? Like, I'll, I just know him as a guy from Mexico who gets on camera twice a week with me. That's that's the extent of my knowledge about Jonathan Goodman. In a in a glorified in a in a, uh, he doesn't even know how to speak. Pretty much. In a, James Clear would have said it by now, by the way. In a, in a wonderfully unprofessional um, podcasting position and, and, and location, um, it gets worse week to week. Can we talk about the subject? I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, to talk yeah about let's get to the subject, because yeah, you had an idea, and that was it was good, I guess. I didn't really understand it, but I'm going to learn here today. I don't think Carolina's seen off. it. Have you seen it, Carolina? Yes, it's riveting. Yeah. It's good. <laughs> cool. Right. Oh man! Oh man! Get, get all their best telenovela acting skills on display here today. Uh, the Armando shot. Manuel, tell me what the topic is. <laughs> you mean to say oh. that she fell in love, but he was actually a demon? <laughs> Coming it's back forbidden. from the depths of hell. We must never speak of this again. <laughs> and then the demon had another wife who was also was a demon me. mistress. <laughs> and it's like, this, is, this just keeps going on. This just this keeps getting deeper and deeper. This it's a very, very this subtle is... art form, the telenovela. You never really know what they're thinking. <laughs> it's uh... so obvious that they just... They just spin these like ridiculous stories and then season after season after season. They're like, we got to keep going with it, but we got to keep spinning another story. And they just spiral out of control to such an insane amount. You know what I realized, Jonathan? Uh, And you may not be familiar with this person, but his name is Tyler Perry. Uh, And he's an African-American director, writer. He's famous for the character Medea, who is like an old grandmother. Uh, But he has lots of shows like on your BET and your TV one. And I just realized that he's just really recreating telenovelas. If you ever watch one of his shows, I've just, I've just come to this determination that it's, it's really like a black telenovela uh, that, that he has. It's, that's really what the scripts are like. I challenge you to watch some, Jonathan. I know you're enamored by that invitation. Um, but enjoy some of that. Jonathan, do we have a topic today? Yeah. Yes. The topic. 
What's the, the topic? topic is, well, I mean, technically the topic is, well, you can all read it on the thing. Um, I don't know. What are we calling this? How do the needle actually moves? Um, I think that's yeah. what we called it. Sounds it, good. It stems, it stems from a quote that I came across in a book that I'm rereading. Call, that, that's from Daniel Kahneman, who's the father of behavioral um, economics. And, um, and the quote goes, the correct lesson to learn from surprises is that the world is surprising. And the reason why the quote jumped out at me so much, and I want to explain it, is that any events that move the needle, be it big global events or even events in your business, are quick and unpredictable and often have no indicators. Um, there, there's this, there's this misnomer that, um, you know, like slow, steady growth is really important and it's what we preach, but the reality of it is growth doesn't actually happen slow and steady. What happens is there's periods of basically no growth, even backwards movement. And then something happens that is largely unpredictable. That's very quick. That's rapid growth. And then you go back into a point generally where it's slow or no growth. And what often happens is people get so beaten down by the day-to-day -day grind and work that they either give up or they change course before that big win happens. Because, mm -hmm. and, and so as a result, it never happens for them. Um, and it's really – it's one of these principles that um, there's a lot of evidence behind it in – again, not just business, in society, um, pretty much the world is so large and so unpredictable that you really have no idea what's going to happen in the future. And, and, and you can just keep doing the right thing day in and day out, day in and day out, and you will catch a lucky break at some point. But when you catch that break, you don't know. But that can be so hard to keep doing it when it seems like a other people are having success even though they may or may not be but we still make up the story in the mind that they are and if you're not getting it right um and so the worst thing that you can ever do is quit is change too early and so that's why I like to call this how the needle actually moves because I, I really just – this is going to be one of these episodes where it's more theoretical philosoph philosophical versus like purely actionable. We definitely have those. But in your business, you have to leave room for error. You, the, the, the way to actually win in business today is to assume that 95% of the time things are going to go wrong. And the 5% of the time where things go right will outpace the 95% of things that go wrong. And um, I'll talk to you about an illustrative example that I think is just a really, really interesting one. So um, you guys may not know this. Well, you guys know this because I put it in the Slack. But one of the <laughs> best performing – well, Aunt Carolina wouldn't know this because she didn't like the Slack. But oh, like yes. Slack, yes. One of, one of the best performing <laughs> stocks – yeah, right. Slack, what's that? Um, one of the best performing stocks of all time is Monster Beverage. So they make Monster Energy drinks and they own a lot mm -hmm. of other stuff. And um, from 1995 to 2018, they were turned 319,000 percent. One of the best performing stocks of all time. Wow. It's unreal, right? It's, it's incredible. <clears throat> here's, here's perhaps the most instructive and interesting and important thing about that is that 95 percent of the time in that period – it traded below its previous high, meaning that the best performing stock of all time appeared as if it was actually moving backwards 95% of the time in a period where it experienced 319,000% growth. So if you were in the market and you bought Monster Beverage in 1995, the odds that you would have, if you were not a objective, rational investor and a reasonable investor, if you were more of an emotionally driven investor, which most people are, most of us run our business based off of emotion as well. Mm -hmm. If you were watching the day-to-day -day fluctuations and there were periods of time, if you look at the chart, were like months on end, this thing was not performing well. You would have dumped it. You would have dumped the one of the best 
stock gains of all time because you were paying way too much attention on the micro and way too little attention on the macro. This is why, and, and so the needle moves quickly in unpredictable ways and it only moves for people who have put themselves in the right position to catch that break when it moves. And the only way to do that is to be, is to have a good plan and kind of put on blinders, particularly protect yourself from emotionally responding and just let it ride, man. Um, because you will win, you know, like, like if you do the right things in business day in and day out, you will win. I promise you there is literally no way to lose. If you invest in the stock market, you will win unless you try to time the stock market, in which case you will lose. You might, you know, you always hear about these sensationalized stories about somebody who, you know, caught a lucky break. They basically hit something at the right time and happened to sell it at the right mm -hmm. time. Again, going back to the stock market uh, parallel and like. That's a really good story to listen to because, you know, that person did really well. That person made a lot of money. The reality of it was they made a really stupid decision. And following somebody's advice or example that made a stupid decision just because it worked out for them is really not a very good idea. The same type of thing with social media. Following... You know, somebody who happened to hit a social media network or make these like dancing TikToks where you're like pointing at words at the right time when, you know, people were looking at those things. It's like maybe you caught it at the right time and somebody won big because of that. Right. But is that the example that you should follow? Well, if you actually want to play the odds and guarantee your success, absolutely not. Because you have no way to time that. You have no way of, of knowing what it is. And what you're not doing is you're not, you're not playing the odds properly, is I guess what this kind of comes down to. Where I want to play a game. I want to rig a game in my favor. Mm -hmm. Right? I want to be able to play 100 games and lose 95 of them. And the five games that I win are going to outpace the hundred. The way to do that is not to spend all of my time and money learning about one obscure little thing that could have a big gain, but if it loses, all of my efforts are gone. What I want to do is I want to put my time and energy and money into something that I know will win and it will grow. And I don't quite know when it's going to catch fire. Um, because that's how the needle, the needle doesn't actually move slowly and predictably. The needle actually moves like this and often backwards. And, and that parallel of, of the monster energy drink or the monster drink stock is a perfect example. 95% of the time it moved backwards. 5% of the time it became the best, one of the best stock performers of all time. When you think about that, when you think about your day in, day out of your business and you're working really, really hard and it seems like you're getting nowhere, but you know you're doing the right stuff. I hope you can remember that example and remember perhaps this philosophy. And it gives you just that little bit of push to keep at doing what you know is the right thing to do and not to jump. Because if you jump, you're going to miss out on the real opportunity. Kero, um, we talked, well, you talked uh, last week about the uh, the little illustration, right? Where the guy's digging for the diamond, right? And he gets close to it and then he walks away because he's like, I don't see it yet. You, you know the, the little illustration I'm talking about? Oh, yes. Like I two guys yes. with the little pickaxe and one's got right. the diamond. The other person looks at that person's diamond and is like, my, my tunnel doesn't work. And then in the little illustration, you see like he was one dig away from the thing. Yeah. Um, this this sort of reminds me of what Jonathan's talking about here, like being able to stay the course. Mm -hmm. But the other thing that I wanted to ask you, because uh, as we both entered into this business, we have similar backgrounds 
uh, that similarity being poverty. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> is it? Don't you think it's advantageous? Like, aren't you just more patient when you just don't have anything? You, you know what I mean? In in terms of you're able to make do for a longer period of time because you have that skill set of negotiating negotiating around the finances that you don't. You know all the tricks and tips to find a way to get something to eat or you buy an item or, you know, mm-hmm. budget your small amount of money. Mm-hmm. Like, do, do you feel like that's an advantage? That was an advantage to you. And of course, your extensive uh, Mary Kay experience. Uh, do you think that's, <laughs> that's an advantage to sort of staying the course when you're going through that 95% of stuff that doesn't quite seem to be working to get I to the think- 5%? Yeah, I think one of the most underrated, powerful, powerful uh, freedoms that we can have is that of having nothing to lose. Right. Because <laughs> when right. you, you know, when you don't have like a big reputation build up yet, it doesn't ah, like you can just kind of do whatever and who cares or whatever, right? If you don't have a massive company in which you have to look after a ton of other employees, mm-hmm. then you like probably Jonathan can speak to that, right? Like you probably feel more free when you don't have all those responsibilities. Like it's a, it's a back and forth, right? Like it's a give and take. A lot of us, like Jonathan has said before, a lot of people want, like they like the idea of like, oh, the million dollar company and da, da, da. But then it's like the stress and responsibility is massive. I don't think we understand really what any of that means. So to answer your question, yes, like it's such a, it allows for a lot more freedom and creativity as well when you have to be resourceful because there's no other choice. Either you're resourceful or you don't eat, right? Like it's just that simple. (laughs) So yes, for sure. (laughs) So, so Jonathan, from what you're explaining, am I understanding correctly that sort of like in Keto's case, that one move was something reference several the you know person in, in that you know and had to uh manually respond to like 800 requests for yes. information and totally freaked out um was that oh Johnson got on the shades now that's that's very nice it's very cool Jonathan. <laughs> it's very very keanu reeves and speed one uh because nobody <laughs> saw speed two let's just go ahead and admit that it wasn't worth the <laughs> wasn't worth the film that they poor sandra bullock to have that smudge on her record uh, lovely woman, Sandra Bullock, by the way. Um, but so Keto sort of had that needle moving moment, you know, after uh, working, 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 working. And then she posts this thing in a group and and the needle moves. Am I understanding correctly that that's sort of what you're indicating here, Jonathan, by, by, by this by this topic? Great answer, Jonathan. Good talk. <laughs> uh, you don't you, you don't, don't really know when it's going to come. <laughs> Um, you don't really know when it's going to come. I can, I mean, I can tell you what mine was. I remember it like it was yesterday. It was a really, it was a really special feeling where, um, I was actually really down on myself beforehand, like really down on myself before it happened, literally right up until the second that it happened. I was, um, I was in New York city for, uh, the wedding of, John Romanello and Nagar Fanuni, who are now split, but I was there for their wedding and I was by myself. I was separated from uh, my girlfriend at the time, who Allison, who's now my wife. And, um, and I was super lonely and I was doing a launch. This was of, of, I guess it was of 1K Extra. It must've been from 1K Extra and it wasn't the first launch for that, but I was doing a launch of the program and it was going okay, but it wasn't going like great. And, um, and I was walking around New York City by myself, super lonely, feeling sorry for myself, feeling lost. I had been doing the PTDC thing for three or four years at that point. Um, you know, working like at night, on weekends, in between clients. I mean, really sacrificing a lot. And Jesus. I gained a bit of an audience. I'd made a bit of money. But like it had – it was not like it hadn't like blown up or anything yet. Right. And – um and so I was, I was directionless and I was by myself. I'd split from the girl that I, you know, obviously loved. I didn't quite know that I loved her yet, but I was split you, from her. Do you need background music for this, John? This is the saddest story that you've ever It's heard. a sad story. It's, it's the saddest of all your travel stories so far. Uh, and so, it's humanizing you in a way, though, that I'm not sure I'm comfortable with. Uh, 
I feel more endeared to you now, and I don't know how to handle that. I don't know how to process that because I'm really starting to consider your feelings as a person right now. And it's, um, I'm sorry. Continue while I hum some boys to men. And so, so I was. How do I say goodbye? Well, please go ahead. To what we had. Kiki won. The good time that made us laugh our way the bad. I hope we get to see tomorrow. Forever gone away. It's so hard to say goodbye to yesterday. Please, please go on, man. I, please you, continue. That, that pulled all the 90s R&B out of me, Jonathan. It's such a sad story so far. So back to it. You're walking into the streets of New York aimless. You got no girl. You got no prospects. You're not making any money. Uh, you know, you're, you're just a kid, a kid with a dream. And I'm, and I'm attending a wedding of two people who up until that point, I mean, still, were, were very successful, right? Very successful just, online. And a lot of very successful online fitness marketers were attending the wedding, mm-hmm. right? And, um, and I'm, of course, comparing myself to them, even though they had started 10 years before me. Right. And I'm walking the streets by myself. I go into Starbucks and I'm like, oh, whatever. It was, I think it was the last day of the launch or something. And the launch mm-hmm. had like gone okay, but not great. And I walked into a Starbucks. And... I walked in and my phone clicked onto the internet as I was in line. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden my phone started buzzing and it just kept buzzing. Mm -hmm. And every single buzz was a sale notification. Oh, And it just kept going and going and going and going. And I'm sitting there, I'm standing there in line waiting to order. And I'm shaking because I knew what these were. Nice. And, and I knew that my life had just changed. Wow. That's and awesome. I didn't know it at the time, but it was $185,000. Oh, Jeez. wow. In those, in those few hours that I was walking around lonely by myself in New York City. And so I finally got up to the front of the Starbucks line and I ordered a medium mint tea because I refused to speak in Starbucks made up language. <laughs> and I also refuse, no matter how much money I just made, to order an eight dollar mocha frappa crappuccino with light milk. So I ordered a cheap tea. And and I was shaking. I mean I just I you know, it was it was so directionless up at that point. And um and I knew that I knew that my life had just changed. Wow. And I was feeling so lost and so bad for myself and so directionless, literally as this was happening, because my phone had no data in the United States. Wow. (laughs) That's crazy. Oh, wow. so you I will oh, remember you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So you wow. literally walked into Starbucks a simp and walked out a pimp. I love it. What a great story. And, and but, but, so, so that gives me a great illustration uh, of what that movement of the needle is. You know, when I started, when I started in the online space a couple of years before there was an OTA, I, and I wasn't familiar with 1K Extra, people used to, people used to tell me things like, um, you know, how long are you going to do this? Um, it, you know, do you feel like it's going to work? Because I, I couldn't find online coaches back then. Like nobody was. Mm-hmm. Nobody was selling this stuff except Jonathan, and I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know of him yet. Uh, and you know, I always told people I'm five years away, right? I, I just, I always thought of it that way from the start. I was giving myself five years to make this thing work, um, and I think, and I think again that I had the benefit of not having people to compare to. Yeah. The detriment was that there was no information. The benefit was that there was no, you know, there was no Amber Reynolds. You know, to compare my welcome kit to there, you know, there was 
There was no. Oh, I heard. I heard some lady that's uh, from Mexico got like eight hundred people responding in the group. <laughs> you know, I wish I was a Mexican woman. Uh, like I didn't. I didn't have to go through that. You know. Uh, so I just didn't know that I should be frustrated by my progress because I didn't know what progress was. So I just decided I'd give it five years. I think that what we see with our current students and, and graduates is that there's so much, there's so many possible stories to compare yourself to. Mm -hmm. And you don't, you don't have the benefit of the 95% of the story, right? They only yeah. have the benefit of the last 5% when the stock rises suddenly, yeah. you know, when you walk into right. Starbucks and get your tea and you walk out a pimp, um, you know, so I, I think that's challenging for them. Uh, yeah. So uh, even though I thought the subject matter today was a bit shaky, uh, I was like, oh, it sounds kind of like trash. I think John is bringing something <laughs> up. You know, I mean, in it's, my defense, you've done it I before. Mean, you know. First of all, first of all, <laughs> y'all need to shut your mouth. Second of all. <laughs> um, <laughs> shut your mouth when you're talking to me. Um, Second what? of all, it's it's a subject that I think is really important to discuss, but is yeah. really – it's hard to communicate it in, like, some sort of succinct way, which is why I wanted to, like, tell that parallel of the star. Um, right. But even after saying it, it's still really hard to live through it. Absolutely. Like, yeah. like you can look – it's like if you look at a chart of somebody's success and you're like, oh, my God, it's hopeless. It's like, yeah, zoom out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But right. holy crap, it's easy to zoom out on somebody else's life and hard to zoom out on your own. So I have my own story and it's a short kind of like two part story and it actually involves. That's a Jonathan. James Clear quote. Can I, talk, <laughs> can I talk about that James Clear quote? Is it's it actually... easy to zoom out on somebody else's life oh. and hard to zoom out on your own. Is that it? No, that that's mine. That's it. That's a John Goodman, but I feel like I could sell oh, that you, to James you, Clear. Feel like <laughs> James Clearish. Uh, you, yeah, I, it, it, it yeah. is. It does have a. It's got a hint. It's got a little essence of uh, of James Clear. You know, g write it out, Jonathan. Let's get the quote card going. See if see how it travels. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm happy. To, as a friend, I'm happy to share it on social media, Jonathan. If that makes you feel good, buddy. Uh, good, John. good for you, John. Uh, go go ahead, Keto. Tell your story, Rainbow Bright. Rainbow Bright. <laughs> So, Great character in the air, so I don't know. So John, I it's, haven't. It's, it's, it's terrifying? like it's it's like an acid trip if you're an if you're an adult. Exactly. It's, it is yeah. terrifying. Really? You, just, you, just, you just don't know I why anything's happening. Mm -mm. I should it's take an edible and then give that a try. <laughs> yeah. Give, give it They're legal in Canada for anybody thinking about judging me. There's nothing illegal about that here. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> go, go, go ahead and have one and uh, let us report back to us what you think. I've seen it recently and I don't know why, but it was frightening. Um, <laughs> in any case, Keto, you're about to share a very special two part yes, story. It's with a us. very, very special story because it involves actually Jonathan. And so, no John, way. if you remember when you had the affiliate program, for when uh for the online trainer academy it, it was like oh, for yeah. those of us who were already graduated we and still we do it. we just don't promote it's different it. yeah yeah it's like a different setup now it doesn't quite work yeah. the same just so that the listeners don't go hog wild thinking that this is coming because i don't think you do it the same way anymore but the very first year that that uh that that program came out uh they set it up as a contest and if there's anything that i love is winning prizes like send me a prize and i will i i will hurt who i need to hurt in, like i don't <laughs> I don't know. That's just me. I I find it so fun. It's not even the competitiveness. It's the fun. Like, it's just exciting. So anyway, so I was all for it. Oh we figured out this awesome thing in which we were helping precision nutrition and it was through me and it was amazing. So I totally killed it. And I won that challenge. And as part of that challenge, the first like the first place, the person who was able to get the most uh, affiliate signups uh, won $10,000. And I won that. And what Jonathan doesn't know is that at that time, I was in the tail end of my marriage coming to, to a halt. And, and, and those, like that $10,000 was one of those moments for me. It was one of those, everything can change in an instant. And, and, and wherever you think your life is going, there's, there's a second in which suddenly just things shift. And for me, that money Are you became... saying that it's because of me? Because of me, you met the mayor? 
<laughs> no, I think I think I had already like randomly met him before that, but that, but that's a good that's a good train of thought. Not really, but okay. Uh, yeah. But however, it was uh, thanks to that that I was able to kind of like start more concisely think uh, taking steps to get myself out of you know a situation that and, I knew and no think about me. think about why you won that contest. Why like, I won it? You, I mean, you you're super aggressive, and yeah. and you love competition, which is yeah. fine. Um, but you won that contest because you had gone out of your way for years to mm -hmm. get educated and to become a very important part of both communities for yep. the Personal Trainer Development Center and Precision Nutrition. Yeah. You built a lot of great relationships with your colleagues. You built a good reputation amongst your colleagues. And you had built connection to them. Yeah. That's why you won that contest. Aww. Right, you did all of that stuff for years. Yes, yes, absolutely. Beforehand. It's true because if I had just sat behind and not done that work, there's no way that that partnership no of sorts could have come together. There's absolutely, no there's no chance. And so then that was the first time that I that that it was like a big hit moment for me because mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that kind of like opened my eyes to a whole bunch of stuff. And so the second year, what did that you do with the money? Um, I was, uh, I, I started renting my own place. I was able to move out and start my life on my own, which is pretty freaking astounding for somebody. And starting life on your own means that you can have boys over, which is. Bow, chicka, bow, wow. I mean, not, uh, not really, but okay, sure. I mean, that was, a, that was an option. Sure. Um, not sure so if you noticed, but the sunglasses are on, which means it is true. <laughs> that makes no what the sense. hell is going but, on okay. here today? <laughs> so now in the second part of that jonathan if, if i may finish my story the second yeah, year talking that about this... how i'm an integral part of your life <laughs> <laughs> well i hate it but you kind of freaking are so if you oh, can just shut it. up and let me finish did you say i hate it what do you yes. are yes <laughs> oh it's like damn it but yes but damn it i hate it but fine <laughs> this is so enjoyable for so me. So the second year that this <laughs> same contest came out, I was like, let's do this, baby. Let's freaking do this, right? Because I'm, I'm already like fired up. And, and that second time around was actually super difficult for me because for some of you, like if you were back in the, you know, if you were in the fitness industry back then, that was right when I was involved in that awful, awful instance case, whatever you want to call it, of sexual harassment in the fitness industry that mm -hmm. was chaotic yeah. and awful and terrible. So I was going, I had, you know, moved out. Um, so I was going through a whole lot of changes and a lot of really bad and difficult stuff in my personal life. And then it's like, oh, affiliate program is up. And I'm like, this is my thing. This is the thing that I'm going to grab onto. And this is going to be kind of like my, um, you know, my, my lifesaver of sorts to keep me floating in this madness of everything going to shit essentially mm -hmm. around me. And, and I did. And, and I won again. And I won first place again, and I could not freaking believe that. And then I got the $10,000 again. And what that allowed me to do, those $10,000, I was able to fly in my entire family to come and visit me in Canada, in my own home, living, oh my God, I'm going to cry. <laughs> I'm, do it because I love it so much. I, I love it too because I was I may join in my you. own place and with my girls and we're safe and we're happy and we're doing fantastic. And I'm, yes, I was able to get my parents, my sister and my sister's kids, all of them from Mexico to see me and to stay with me for 10 days. And they were able to just share with me in this whole new kind of like opening of my life. And that it. was just further confirmation that no matter what is going on around you, Things can change in an instant. And uh, it does depend on the work that you do behind the scenes, all the struggle that you go through, but things can change in an instant. Yes, I love that, Keto. That's absolutely an awesome story. Uh, I think I I think I saw John experience a feeling too. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, people, people are gonna love John after this episode. This this is the Jonathan Goodman breakthrough episode. This this is like a <laughs> It's like a great episode of Oprah Winfrey where you, where you meet someone uh, and you really get to understand what makes them tick. Uh, so so I, I love that story so much. And it's so true, right? You, you just don't know what things that you're actively doing at the moment that are setting you up to take advantage of that needle 
when it's yeah. time for it to move. Uh, and you can't guess at it. You can't predict it. Uh, you can't you can't control it. Right. All that you control is your effort yes. and your what attitude you over mm-hmm. time. Uh, and then when the when the wind blows just right, you know, when when the when the when the stars in the sky dance off the lake uh, in the appropriate <laughs> way, when the stars align, uh, when the when, moon hits your eye, oh, like a big piece of pot. It's amore. Yeah. That's amore. That's um, amore. Uh, so, so, man, I hope you guys are inspired out there by what you've heard today. Again, I thought this was going to be a shell of a show. Uh, I really did. I had very. I was looking more forward to my wisdom teeth removal than this show today. Actually, uh, and who knew? Right? We just stumbled into some. This podcast is an idea of that. I think we're on episode 97 or 98, uh, 98. And so you guys have witnessed all 95 of the crap shows that we've done. Here we are in the last 5% and the needle's moving. I don't know what to tell you, uh, except for the fact that we're not trending in Lithuania anymore. Yeah, I was going to say, the needle's moving time. backwards in Lithuania. Yeah, in Lithuania. Two listeners, now we have one over there. Yeah. We moved Ch- down the rankings, let me tell you. I think Zoom maybe back. somebody. I think Zoom somebody. Back. I'm. I'm just hoping the other listener didn't pass away or something like that because that's that's a bit morbid, you know. When when you've got two listeners in an entire country and one of them dies, it cuts it cuts your reach in half. Uh, for those that don't know that, uh, things things go down dramatically. Um, but yeah, this is such a great and important thing to understand out there for all of you feeling frustrated, like things aren't working. There's no such thing. There's no such thing as you doing consistent good work and it doesn't work. You haven't seen the results of it yet. Um, you know, in, and, in the result, time, and when the results come, they come quick, they come quick. in unpredictable ways. Yeah. It's, it's a big at thing. Su- at, at often at surprising times. Yeah. Absolutely. And they, don't, people, they don't come slowly. And that's right? when people I start asking where did she come from? Where did right. he come from? Out of nowhere. Right. And now suddenly I see them all over the place. Like, girl, I've been at this for seven years. I don't know what to right. tell you. Like, there's nothing sudden about this for right here. The, the last conversation I had with a student today was uh, they were asking me about my social media strategy. And they, and they took r- great notes. Uh, and at the end, they summarized everything that I, that I told them. They said, so if I just do this, 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 and this, um, I was like, yes. Oh, and add seven years to it. That, that too, you know, drop, yeah. drop that on top of it. That's your cherry on top. Do it for seven years. Uh, <laughs> and in yeah. no time, you'll have the same <laughs> results. Suddenly, <laughs> unexpectedly. <laughs> unexpectedly after seven long years of trying to do this, you know, it'll, it'll pan out. Um, you, you can't. You're you're very rarely going to move the needle with one isolated is that incident. Your, is that your one weird trick to success? Yeah, that's what that's my one weird, <laughs> weird trick. Uh, stupid. Uh, David Letterman used to have stupid human tricks, and that's my one stupid human trick. Um, <laughs> you know, you're you're very rarely going to move the needle with one isolated incident, but it's also very rarely that you don't think that someone has moved the needle with one isolated incident if you're looking from the outside. It's always going to look like they did a thing. And then it moved, and that's only because right. you weren't there for the rest of it. So it yeah. always looks that way, and you're never going to experience that. So you're chasing something in trying to do that that doesn't exist. Um, mm-hmm. you, you've only seen the tail end of the comments. Um, yep. Uh, and, uh, and that's really all I have to say. I mean, you guys got anything? Else? Did we do it? Did we do it? Speaking of moving the needle, uh, OTA has been helping trainers and nutrition coaches build thriving online businesses since 2013. Let us help you take the guesswork out. It's the Online Trainer Academy, or the Academy for short. Uh, come on over to onlinetrainer.com slash OTA. We're ready for you to jump in. We've got a brand new version for um, the, the new Online Trainer Academy. has got a new car smell. Get in, take a test drive. You'll enjoy it. Uh, it's got all the newest features. Uh, it's got Amber Reynolds. It's got the uh, upgraded Amber. James James Clear Entertainment System. Uh, you're going <laughs> to love taking this thing for a drive now. It's four-wheel suspension, and the ride is luxurious in version four. Uh, we got all the kinks out. Uh, so uh, come come on and, and join us there. We're, we're going to change I ask, your life. Can I ask Carolina a question? Yes. 
Uh, do you like guesswork? Do I like what? Do you like guesswork? guesswork? Sure. No, you don't. Oh. Well, then like the it. online trainer academy is not, not right for you. you. She oh, wants to guess. guesswork. I don't, I don't even, I'm like, sure, I'll go with it. What do you want to ask me? What do you want me to guess? <laughs> I thought you were going to ask again. me Let's a random again. question. Amber, we're going we're gonna to do this with you, okay? <laughs> we're, we're, we're... No, I don't like somebody guesswork. Mute, somebody mute. Oh, you don't like guesswork? <laughs> no. Well, then the Online Trainer Academy is right for you. If you don't like so... guesswork with your online training business, make sure you so hustle like on you. down that. Make sure you hustle on down to the Online Trainer Academy. OnlineTrainer.com slash Academy. Take the guesswork out of your All business. Of if you are like Carolina Bomos and you do like right guesswork, make sure you don't go on down. But if you don't like guesswork, go on down to the Online Trainer Academy. Play the jingle. You know what, you know what Jonathan? The, the Online Trainer Academy is like a turkey. And, and the coaches are like the turkey baster. And, and we suck the guesswork right out of the turkey. <laughs> Uh, and and then we turn it into then we turn the guesswork into delicious gravy, and then, and which then we you spread all over the turkey. With all and new knowledge and all the we new stuff it with we, if, if, you want, if you if you want to be tabled, you want to be tabled and stuffed with knowledge. The online training academy <laughs> is right for you. Uh, we've, we've, We've been stuffing our students since 2013. <laughs> <laughs> and now they're full of, now they're full of guesswork. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, there better be a jingle soon or this thing is going to get worse. I'm not done yet. I've had analogies and I don't know what just happened. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Stuff, they get stuffed with knowledge. Uh, <laughs> on your favorite table and have the juices oh. taken out, which I guess oh, yeah, Reddit can come up with a good image for that one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, gosh. <laughs> man, I should have saved that one for a holiday episode, right? Ooh. That's, the, that's oh. our thanks. That's our new Thanksgiving ad, Jonathan. Uh, we get Jonathan in the chef's <laughs> hat with a turkey baster in his hand and a mask to piss people off because people don't like it when you wear the mask, Jonathan. Uh, I think that'd be a great ad. You know, oh, I'm I'm not in charge of marketing for PTDC, but I think I just made a strong case. I don't know. I think you should be. I think you we'll should let be. the people decide. Well, add a little bit of mint jubilee on top. Right. Right. <laughs> I like the word jubilee. It makes me happy. <laughs> so jubilee. I'm off to have a man reach deep into my mouth invasively and take out bone. I don't know what you guys are doing later, but <laughs> hope you have a fabulous day out there if you listen to this episode of the podcast. Show notes can be found at onlinetrainer.com slash podcast. Uh, maybe we'll throw my x-rays up in the show notes on this one uh, <laughs> of, the, of the wisdom tooth extraction. I think the people would love to see that. Uh, Jonathan, great episode, Jonathan. I don't, I don't often say this, but I was glad that you were here today. Um, <laughs> would not have come to the, you know, and, and, and Keto sharing was just, it was just, it was just worth all of my time. It was special, <laughs> it was special wasn't it? Just a lovely Reginald, story. Reginald, yeah. I'm glad that you were here with me. <laughs> Thank you, James. This is the Online Trainer Show. Trainer Show. Trainer Show. This is the Online Trainer Show. We shouldn't have a podcast. <laughs>